So, Sunday again. And I finally started to do something else with building than just building buildings or uh, yeah, infrastructure roads and uh, clearing out and cutting silva and stuff like that. I've been doing some small stuff before, but uh, last week or this, uh, in the middle of this week was the first day I actually started to do something uh, in, the, in the direction that I want to go, like building furniture. And this here is just the first, uh, first example, I guess, of what type of furniture I'm going to make. This here is a plum tree root that's kind of just sculptured into a, a stool of sorts. In this region here, we have a lot of three, three-legged stools. I can't remember the name of it, but uh, this is my version of it. And uh, I guess this is the type of furniture I'm going to start making in the beginning here because I have a a bunch of these uh, plum tree roots that I took up from the, where I built uh, the woodshed just behind the camera. It was a bunch of, of uh, plum trees there. So I took them off and these are the roots that I saved for, uh, for future projects. And this is the first project that's happening. And as you can see, it's uh, patched together with a bit of metal and, and, and stuff. And it's, uh, And this leg, for instance, is completely rotten here. So, yeah, I just kind of backfilled it with some, uh, I mixed water and, and wood chips with, uh, with the wood glue. And then as the, the water swells and the glue dries, it's kind of create this very strong uh, wood filler kind of. And then I just encased it with, uh, with metal to make sure that the leg is still, still uh, standing up. And for sure, this is going to last forever. Because now, although I'm kind of done with the, with the work of it, so to speak, with the, the wood stuff. Now I just need to continue feeding it with linseed oil. And I suspect, as you can see as well, it's standing in, in trays of, in here is linseed oil as well as in there. And uh, it's just sucking up the, the linseed into the, to the end wood. And then I just kind of keep on feeding this one until it doesn't take any more, more oil. And how do you know that? Well, basically it's just this, the surface is, gonna continue glistening and it doesn't really suck into the wood and after and I expect this one to take around a liter of uh, of linseed oil roughly a, a liter and when that done I just kind of wipe up off the excess of, of the oil let it dry for a day and then finish it off with just beeswax and that's it and then this is gonna last for forever <laughs> literally forever it's a root by default, it's very dense, very, very dense. So water doesn't really penetrate through it. And even if the surface gets a bit, whatever, this will never rotten, for sure. But yeah, with all the linseed oil, it's gonna last forever. It can be in the bottom of the sea and it would still look as new if you put a lot after a lifetime, I would guess. So yeah, that's about the furniture I'm gonna make. And as I said, I have a bunch still there maybe six seven more and depends on like the form form of it this just happened to be in the form of a of a stool I thought I just added this this back leg and then uh, sanded it down all in all I have to say it's about just sanding this one it's about 10 to 12 hours constant sanding and you go I went from well, first chainsaw to just rough it out because there were still some root hanging out. Uh, roughed it up with the chainsaw and then the angle grinder to just get the form smooth. And then a uh, round sander. And after that is uh, by hand. And after that, the last stage or with one second. If you ever wondered how you get like... So, if you ever wondered how you get like a... How to say? It's like a very soft surface of the wood it's almost like a velvety feel of it and that is easily to achieve or easier to achieve if you have one of these is a sponge sander and this is just a like a normal sponge that you have in the kitchen but instead of the the other stuff is kind of like sandpaper on it and what it does it's instead of because every time you sand by hand you kind of add scratches on the wood very small scratches but if you do it with the the spongy thing it kind of eliminate the, the scratches down and just 
uh, make the surface super smooth. And this is, as I said, the last last instance of the sanding is the sponge sanding to just get it to the to the final finish. And as I said, now it's just a question of feeding it with oil until it's uh, completely soaked up with the, with oil, and then I just finish it up with beeswax, and then it's done. And I expect that to take another two days, maybe. And I mean, it's it's work for two minutes and waiting for four. But yeah, these ones just keep on sucking up and the, the back leg, I don't know if you see it, but this one here is on the third one and it's about a deciliter every time. So I, this one is going to be sucked up today for sure. So when I have about, I would say, roughly half a liter left to, to fill this up with, then I'm sure it's going to take all the half of the liter. So yeah. Going forward, I think this is gonna be the the thing I'm 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 gonna be doing and starting with the roots since I have a lot of roots, and then just see what type of material I can get my hands on. Already, I talk to neighbors and they say that well, I have this and I have that, so it's just basically a question. I have to go and get the material and I can start working with it. But for now, I think I'm gonna stick to the root craft. It's it's fairly, I like it. And I really don't mind sanding. It's uh, I just get into a trance and, and sand, sand, sand. But yeah, this type of work is a lot of sanding. It's basically just sanding and sculpturing. All in all, I think it's fun. So I'm just going to continue doing it to see what, what other type of furniture I can, can make or what type of things that can be done with all the root things. Because even like these small, small uh, root things that are teeny like the fingers are still uh, very solid and they're gonna last forever they don't break i mean the because the the roots are twisted and bent and so the grains go all ways direction and just create a very strong uh, wood type although i have to say if you want to do stuff with with roots i would recommend and this is just my recommendation experts have other other opinions i'm, I'm sure of it but I would say that when you harvest the roots from the ground, you need to leave it at least one year uh, to dry fairly slow, like in, in good conditions, out of the sun and not too hot. And it's just because if you dry it too fast, this will completely crack and just go everywhere. Uh, basically what happens is that all the moisture inside the wood, since the grains are so tightly packed, there's no way for the, for the moisture to escape. And if it dries too, quite, too quickly, it's supposed like it evaporates some from the from the sides of the wood, but mostly comes from the end woods of the of the tree, right? And if that process happens too fastly, they can't expel all the gases from the end woods, and then it needs to force out in the in the trunk of the tree, and then it just cracks out. So, if you're gonna do work with with roots, just make sure that you dry them in a in a slow condition, and the drying time takes depending on the size of the root, of course, the bigger Size do matter in this this uh, application. So if it's a big root, it takes longer to dry out, of course. Yeah, and that's about it, I think. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, so I'm thinking I, I'm gonna start or continue doing this type of, 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 uh, of furniture and it's gonna be all the shapes and sizes, I guess. And I, I actually really talked talk to a to my friend that has an hotel and, and uh, asked if I could start putting my furniture there for, for guests to, to see and, and possibly buy. So, and that, uh, that's an avenue I'm looking into. And, uh, but let's see, I need to start producing stuff first. And this is just the first of hopefully many, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's it. And also, like this, uh, you see the, the tabletop, as you may or may not know, it's it's all linseed and, and betum here as well. And all my furniture is going to be linseed, betum and uh, beeswax. So this tabletop is going to be so impregnated with linseed and, and bees, beeswax and all, all sorts of things. So this tabletop is also going to stand for test of time forever. And also what I like to say is like the, since all these projects are eco-friendly, it's, uh, 
it takes a different uh, yeah it's hard to say but it kind of treats the, the wood differently instead of it would be like a heavy varnish that's in my opinion should not be on any any type of outdoor furniture is slowly just killing your wood and then you go into the process that you're supposed to to clean and varnish every year and sand but that never happens right so my opinion would be no varnish on on outdoor furniture just linseed oil and and beeswax and then you have something that's gonna last forever hmm. and on that subject actually if if you want to leave your furniture completely untreated outdoor furniture and you want the wood to take it's like aging normal aging process going from whatever depending on the wood type but say that it goes to grayish and you want to keep it like in that that uh, kind of style what I would recommend is to just maybe two times a year before summer and after summer clean your furniture with uh, with uh, green soap and also green soap is, is just made from uh, uh, plant oils right so it's completely eco-friendly which means it's uh, you can clean your products or outdoor furniture on the on the lawn straight you don't have to take them to other places right because there's no chemicals and it's not harmful for the for the grass and so forth so i just a big champion of all these natural things because it's just if you work with it on the daily basis just for your hands and and skin uh, it's just overall <laughs> all better than having chemicals, right? And that's it. Felt like a fast month today. Anyhow, so if if you wanna see, as I also, uh, worth mentioning, now I'm just getting, getting going with this uh, uh, woodcraft type of situation. And in the future, it will probably be uh, other type of instruction videos or even as I said the video last week that I'm probably gonna go live when I'm a bit more set up in the settings here and uh, have no problems with that and then I just gonna show more a bit of the process of doing it than just telling it but for now this is all I have time with actually too because I have all other things to take care of so I really don't have time to do much much editing and, and, and stuff like that uh, in regards to YouTube but it's coming further on in the process. And also, uh, if you want to read a bit more, because uh, on X, I write more text format things that uh, focusing more on the wood itself and uh, different types of wood and processes of handling wood. And it's just more about, uh, it's a text driven format. So if you want to go and, and check it out on X, feel free. I try to build a following there as well to just have two avenues of uh, of revenue so let's see so if you're interesting there it's uh, simple life under dash pt that is my uh, x uh, handle so feel free to drop in there and check my uh, my posts and uh, and uh, text format driven uh, content and yeah the coffee scent is over, so and I have really nothing to show around the workshop this week. It's just this that's been focused this week on for me. So I guess it's just left to say uh, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I see you next week. Ciao.